In the context of extensive form games, we have so far discussed about pure strategies. We haven't uh, spoken about how we can mix the strategies or uh, somewhat probabilistically pick these strategies. So unlike the normal form games where there was only one kind of randomization available, which is like uh, you have the set of pure strategies and you are randomizing, uh, picking any of those uh, uh, strategies in a probabilistic manner, which we call the mixed strategy. Uh, in uh, extensive form games, because the extensive form games are, uh, have multiple stages, you can uh, think about the randomization in two different ways. One is where you are enumerating all possible pure strategies, that is the complete plan at every stage of the game, and randomize, uh, then uh, assign probabilities to those strategies. Or you can think about an independent draw uh, of a, a probabilistic draw at every information set of this game. So why didn't we talk about this randomization in the case of uh, perfect information extensive form games? Because we already knew that uh, it is possible to find a pure strategy equilibrium, uh, which was the subgame perfect Nash equilibrium, which also happens to be the um, pure strategy Nash equilibrium. Because PIEFG is one such kind of game where the pure strategy Nash equilibrium uh, is guaranteed to exist and that is the same as that is uh, that happens to be uh, the subgame perfect Nash equilibrium uh, for finite uh, PIEFGs then we never bothered about uh, going for randomized strategies uh, so but uh, as we said here uh, in the case of imperfect information extensive form games we'll have to go for randomized strategies and that randomization can happen in two different ways so let us look at uh, directly the, the example and uh, try to see what is the difference between these uh, two types of randomization. So let us look at this example on the left hand side. So here we have two players, player one is playing at the root and also at this information set which is at the third level. And in between player two uh, makes, uh, makes another move. So we are going to just denote the, the first information set which is a single turn for player 1 with i i i 1 1 and the second information set as i 1 2. Uh, similarly player 2 has only one uh, information set which can be represented as i uh, i 2 1. Now uh, what, uh, what is the set of all possible uh, strategies for pure strategies for player 1? We have done this uh, earlier, so because in uh, in a specific in information set for all the nodes that is living in the same information set should have the same set of uh, strategies. So therefore, in both these nodes here, uh, the strategies are the same L2 R2 in both these cases. So therefore, player one can have uh, four possible uh, pure strategies. Uh, this is the set of all possible pure actions, pure strategies uh, that uh, player one can pick. So let us focus only on player one because for player two it, it's only two of them and there is uh, uh, there is no difference between uh, uh, between the two type of randomization that we are talking about. So now by the definition of mixed strategy in the classical way that the way we have defined it for the normal form games we are going to assign probabilities for each of these pure strategies. So therefore a mixed strategy in this context for player one will be a probability mass which gives probabilities to all these uh, pure strategies and these numbers should always be non-negative and should sum to 1. Now you can think of another kind of randomization which does not uh, list out all possible strategies of this player at the very beginning. So you can think of that why uh, do you need to list out all the possible strategies. Player 1 can just toss a coin at, uh, at uh, this information set and decide whether to play L1 or R1. Similarly, when it reaches this information set I12, it can do a very similar thing. It can toss another coin or maybe the same coin, uh, which will give it uh, a different probability uh, distribution over the strategies L2 and R2. That looks more uh, natural in this case uh, because uh, there is this amount of independence. 
in, in two different uh, information sets. So it, uh, the, the type of randomization that we just discussed uh, is uh, what we are going to call. So those kind of probabilistic strategies, we are going to call them behavioral strategies. So this is different from the, the mixed strategy definition that we have uh, discussed so far. And uh, in this and the following modules, we will see that there is a certain amount of difference. So you cannot really uh, transform one strategy into another and vice versa all the time. So what, uh, how can we formally define a behavioral strategy? So let's say B1, I11. So this is the behavioral strategy uh, at the first information set for player one. And uh, that is a probability distribution over these two strategies. So L1 and R1. Similarly, the behavioral strategy at the second information set I12 is a probability distribution over this L2 and R2. So this is just formally capturing that, uh, uh, that stuff, that uh, type of randomization that we just discussed. So formally, uh, the a behavioral strategy of a player in an IIEFG is a function that maps each of her information sets to a probability distribution over the set of possible actions in, in that information set. So uh, the difference between this behavioral strategy and the uh, traditional mixed strategy is that we are going uh, one information set at a time and we are randomizing at an information set level. We will definitely talk about the relationship between mixed and behavioral strategies. One observation that we can make from this uh, example is that the mixed strategies here are living in a, in a uh, higher dimensional space. So it is in R to the 4 because there are 4 uh, pure strategies and you are putting uh, probability masses on them. While the behavioral strategies are living in two separate uh, two dimensional spaces. So that way it seems like mixed strategies are a little richer, larger concept. Uh, but we'll see that uh, that's not completely true for all sorts of games. So uh, we can ask questions like can a player attain a higher payoff in one strategy than the other? And the, the most important question is can we have an equivalence? In which kind of games we can have equivalence so that we really don't need to uh, uh, think about whether it is a mixed strategy or a behavioral strategy. It will be the same. Uh, we can use them interchangeably. So to talk about equivalence, we'll have to first define uh, how uh, we are going to uh, uh, define the equivalence between two different kinds of strategies. And in order to do that, we can uh, define the equivalence in terms of the probability of reaching a particular vertex or a history. Let's say X. So suppose uh, in this uh, in this example, um, in the same example, we have a, a specific node X and we are asking what is the probability of reaching this particular node under a behavioral strategy, this, or a mixed strategy, this. So we can start with the mixed strategy. So uh, what is the probability that we will need to reach this uh, vertex X? So this is going to be, so uh, definitely we'll have to, uh, for, for this to happen, uh, we'll have to look at what is the probability with which you pick this R1. Uh, this this strategy here so that you you reach here and then uh, what is the probability that player 2 is picking uh, the action R and uh, therefore we can actually write it so sigma 1 R1 times sigma 2 R2 because these two players are picking their strategies independently players uh, in this case will always pick uh, strategies independently uh, so uh, we can expand this. Remember this uh, sigma 1 was essentially a function of two random variables. The first random variable was taking values uh, of the action that is happening in the first round and the second random variable was taking the values uh, in the second round or, or second round of player 1 which is the third round of this game. Now if we just ask what is the probability that sigma 1 L1 uh, then we'll have to marginalize over sigma 1. So you'll have to sum sigma 1 L1 L2 and sigma 1 L1 R2. So similarly for finding the R1, we'll have to uh, do this exercise. So sigma 1 uh, R1 L2 plus sigma 1 R1 R2. Uh, so that is written here and then multiply with sigma 2 R. Now uh, what happens uh, when we uh, look at the behavioral strategy? The probability that uh, the 
a game reaches this the same node same uh, node x uh, under this behavioral strategy is given by uh, b1 i11 so the behavioral strategy is uh, rather easier to capture because you are just uh, looking at the, uh, the the behavioral strategy at this information set and what is the value so what is this probability uh, when you are picking r1 multi and uh, then you uh, look at the behavioral strategy of the other player player 2 um, when it is picking r so this is the two different ways you can reach the same node and these are the probabilities and when we are talking about equivalence uh, very naturally these two numbers should equate they should be the same so let let me just go over and uh, uh, define that a little formally uh, the different players can choose different kinds of strategies so this is perfectly fine so even if uh, player one so if you are talking about uh, the uh, a specific player let's say player one uh, it does not really matter whether the other player is picking a mixed strategy or a, or a behavioral strategy so we'll have to um, so uh, if player one chooses the sigma one above and the other player is uh, player two is choosing the behavioral strategy then you can write this in a combination of this so the first one is coming from the uh, mixed strategy of this player but the second one is coming from the uh, behavioral strategy of the second player so uh, we will define the equivalence between a mixed strategy and a behavioral strategy in the following way so a mixed strategy sigma i and a behavioral strategy bi of a player uh, in an iiefg are equivalent if for every uh, so this should be for if for every mixed or behavioral strategy vector uh, zeta, uh, xi minus i so that means it is uh, holding for all uh, possible strategy profiles of the other players and at every vertex um, the in that game tree this equivalence holds. so that is the other players are playing their uh, favorite strategy but they are holding on to that strategy this could be uh, a mixed uh, a mixed strategy or a behavioral strategy or uh, different players might pick different kinds of mixed and behavioral strategy but despite that the uh, the probability of reaching this node under the mixed strategy for player i should be the same as under that uh, behavioral strategy for the same player so if we look at the example above um, then we can actually uh, work this numbers out so we can find that what is the behavioral strategy so the behavioral probability mass uh, on l1 so this is the first outcome so if you look at the um, the first node here so this is uh, under that behavioral strategy b1 uh, of i11 of l1 this has to be the same as the the probability under that uh, behavioral strategy uh, under the mixed strategy where it is coming l1 which is nothing but the marginal uh, the sum of the marginals similarly you can do the same exercise for r1 what is the probability of reaching that node so uh, this one was the first node the second one is about this node and we are equating the uh, the behavioral strategies there and then uh, we we look at the the, the following uh, the final nodes so we uh, what is the probability that if, if it takes this l l2 so and uh, go to the the terminal nodes and then what is the uh, what are the corresponding probabilities you can just uh, do the very similar exercise by marginalizing appropriately all these uh, numbers uh, so this i have written as a short uh, shorthand notation what actually happens is you have to so here we will have an expression like r1 that that is in the first round player one is playing r1 and in the second round it is playing l2 and you are going to divide it with the uh, the sum of this marginal so r1 and l1 plus sigma 1 of r1 times uh, r2 so this will be so this will the denominator in that case will be nothing but sigma 1 of r1 and that's the reason you can actually write it as a, a conditional probability you know that this uh, uh, this divided by this number is nothing but l2 given r1 so you can do this exercise yourself and similarly for the other one so this is going to be the uh, the number so if these two strategies are, are to be same 
then this numbers should be uh, should be equal then only we can call that uh, b1 and sigma 1 are equivalent according to our definition so let, uh, let us make one uh, very important observation uh, and uh, there is a claim that is going to come. So uh, whenever we are talking about this equivalence, in this example we have looked at the equivalence at every stage. Uh, but uh, it is not really necessary to look at the equivalence at every stage of this game. Uh, rather this claim says that it is sufficient to check the equivalence only at the leaf nodes. And you can prove this uh, claim formally. The uh, the intuition is the following: How do you find the uh, the equivalence or the probability of reaching a non-terminal node, non-leaf node, uh, is by looking uh, by summing the corresponding probabilities in its subtree. If you uh, restrict in this game tree to that specific node where you uh, that intermediate node where you want to find out. Uh, the probability of uh, reaching that node, you are essentially going to uh, sum it over all the the probabilities at all its leaf nodes uh, in, in its subtree. So therefore, if we have the equivalence at the leaf nodes, you are guaranteed to have the equivalence at those nodes. So that essentially shows that it is not really required to look at the the intermediate nodes. It's just redundant. You can only ensure the equivalence at the leaf nodes and that will be sufficient to make sure that this uh, two strategies, uh, mixed and behavioral strategies are equivalent. And this argument can actually be extended further even for the utility description. So utility equivalence says that if you have two uh, strategies, mixed and behavioral strategies which are equivalent. Then for every mixed or behavioral strategy vector of the other players, which is given by uh, xi minus xi, uh, the, uh, the equivalent also holds for the uh, utilities. So that is, uh, that is the uh, utility equivalence result. Uh, this comes as a byproduct of the equivalence of the, um, of the behavioral and the mixed strategies. Now you can uh, repeat this argument for any equivalent mixed and uh, behavioral strategy profiles that is it is for all the players if they are equivalent uh, so here we are going to call this sigma and b are equivalent that means for every player the corresponding sigma i's and b i's are equivalent uh, then you have the uh, utility uh, at uh, at that strategy profile mixed strategy profile and the behavioral strategy profile to be also the same this is very straightforward to show